We are thankful to our Father in heaven as we welcome you to another edition of Authentic Kingdom Culture Live broadcast uh, right on this channel. And the Father has been gracious to all of us and we give him praise as we just approach him right now. Say, Father, by your grace we come. We come by the way of the blood. We come to receive help for today. We come to receive your grace. As you are seated on the throne of grace, have your way, Lord. And let our encounter with you this day and this season be full of your grace. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we've been away for uh, a few days so that uh, the master class will conclude the last course on the, on the fundamental seas with a panel discussion and with the uh, release by the mentors and then the cost impact uh, uh, assessment. And today we begin the next course. And this has to do with divine instruments. There are two courses, divine instruments for us to do the work of the Lord. And there are two courses that will be taken from that this section. And if the Lord gives us enablement, we will finish the two courses before the IMF USA conference, which is going to be in the middle of July. And the reason, or third weekend of July, the reason is simple. Before the graduation of the 2018, the previous master class, it is laid in our hearts to get to the threshold of seven, so that those who have got to our seven can come to that event, see the other people being sent or being commissioned, and also be inducted into the program. So, men and brethren, bear with us right now as we take you through the first of the two things the Father has ordained for his people in the earth tree. And the first of them is grace. Grace, and listen to this. In the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 10, we're told that the Elohim of all grace, who has called us unto it, is the eternal glory by Yeshua HaMashiach. And what is, where does he stay? The Elohim of all grace. You know, the name of his throne is called the throne of grace. What does he do from the throne of grace? What does the Elohim of all grace do from the throne of grace? Brothers and sisters, he dispenses grace. He dispenses grace so that through his grace, we can come into his kingdom. Through his grace, we can live the kingdom life. Through his grace, we can be instruments through which he passes and touches the lives of people. And brothers and sisters, because we are so used to the churchianity paradigm of thinking, which thinks about, you know, ministry in terms of having a building people come into, having a building people go into on certain holidays and creating an organization people join, so to say, we tend to forget that the kingdom is not about buildings, it's not about organizations, it's not about 501Cs and, and charities. The kingdom is about the king who desires to exert his influence, the influence of his presence and of his power through vessels who respond to his grace. And men and brethren, once you forget that framework, you're going to go into things that will lead you to competition. Brethren are doing all kinds of funny things. Funny stuff you see people doing. And those funny things is because of the framework. People are looking for more people, more member, more organization, more building. And it makes people not to be able to have the liberty to pour out grace. And that's why a lot of people are actually suboptimized from a spiritual point of view. Majority, it is said that the Christian graveyard is the most wasteful place in the whole world. Why? Because therein lies gifts and callings that were never fulfilled. Therein lies great destinies that were never attained. And people were cut short. And what are the reasons why people? I'm talking about, you know, I'm not talking about what you know, I'm talking about what the Father told me repeatedly is that a lot of Christians are so hung up on my church, my organization, my building, my entity. 
that they forget the kingdom is one. Our Father is one. Holy Spirit is one. And the Father is looking for humans who he will pour out his grace. The grace of Elohim that brings us salvation. The Paul told Titus has appeared to all men. And we are saved by grace through faith. And then when we come into the kingdom, he wants us to surrender our vessels to ever increasing measures of his grace to the extent that we come to know that it's only by his grace that we are what we are. We have nothing of our own. His, our qualification does not cut it. Our age does not cut it. Our pedigree does not cut it. Who we are born into. The money in the bank account does not influence us, does not define us. We are supposed to be defined by the quantum and quality of grace that we give the Father's scope to exact through us. The kingdom is a kingdom of influence. It's an influencing kingdom. Just as you have salt influencing bland food, that salt influences it to bring out taste or influences what would have gone bad and preserves it from corruption, Oh, men and brethren, just as light dispels darkness, the kingdom is a kingdom of influence. And therefore, that influence is what is called grace, the Zoe life, the life of Elohim, men and brethren. Today we begin course 107, Grace. Grace. There's a book on it, an e-book on it, on the website www.kingdombusclub.com. But as we do this program, the Lord may revise and increase our understanding and the scope so that we come to a place by the time we finish, the Lord may expand it by 20 more pages or 30 more pages as He pleases Him, and then it becomes a second edition. And that's part of what grace does. Grace is increasing. The grace to write the course of two years ago or three years ago is not the same as the grace to write it now because we encounter grace all, every day. And the grace we encounter transforms our perspectives, transforms our mindset, renews us, and makes us willing vessels, makes us purer vessels, makes us vessels he can use to touch more lives. You know, man and brother, you know, people love the, some of these feasts of Christendom and feast of the world system. Mother's Day, Father's Day, the things that divide the church People love it a lot, unknown to them. You may have wondered why we don't talk about these things. We don't talk about it because the grace the Father has given to us, he may not have given it to others. That's why we don't, we don't campaign on it. But the grace he has given to us does not permit us to do anything that separates. Male and female, young and old, rich and poor. The grace he has given to us makes us to allow people to be. Some people even post the happy Father's Day. Praise the Lord. You know what? That Ask for this vessel according to the grace given to this vessel, the grace of the revelation, the grace of the understanding. We are a place where grace is received from whoever the Father gives it. So whatever that will cause me to begin to divide people according to gender, according to age, according to their socioeconomic status, I find it unable. That's why we don't do apostles' uh, caucus. Apostles' caucus, prophets' caucus. That's why we don't encourage male uh, alpha fraternities and female sororities because these things, they tear at the root of grace. The more you understand grace, the more you receive people. Henceforth, no we no man after the flesh, but by the Spirit. The more you understand grace, the more you are open to the Father's dealings in your life and the dealings in the life of other people, men and brethren. There's one thing, by way of prologue, before we go into, you know, the next lesson, course 107, Grace, lesson one, the prologue, I want to share with you some of the nuggets of the amazing riches of grace the Father showed us. Some of them we shared even on Facebook. But there's one thing that almost all religions, whether they're talking about Judaism or Christian religion, Pentecostalism, uh, charismaticism, you know, uh, many of the various subsets of Christianity or Catholicism or, you know, uh, Protestantism generally, one thing they have in common is legalism. There's a tendency towards being legalistic with Elohim, with people. 
And at the root of almost all religions, religion turns humans into worshippers of an impersonal God who exerts a heavy burden on those who are his worshippers when they cannot meet up with the standards, with a long list of rituals and activities designed to curry his favor. And you know what? He takes a cordial and hits at them. And without knowing it unconsciously, we, give, we foster a false image, a negative image of Elohim, man and bread and kingdom life, which is in and through Yeshua HaMashiach, offers a different perspective. He speaks of Yahweh as a father in heaven, who revealed himself to humanity in the person of Yeshua Jesus, so that by his grace, the divine life and ability in him Humanity can receive not just forgiveness from sins, but admission into his family. By his grace, we receive forgiveness from sins. By his grace, we receive admission into his family. By his grace, we walk with him. And you know what? The 16 glorious truths of course 104, they, what are they essentially? They represent grace in releases into the heart of those who receive the salvation in Yeshua, as well as the power of life that is transformed by the blood. Men and brethren, that's what the 16 glorious truths are. Things the Father is pleased to release to us, free of charge. And you know what? When we also understand these nine fundamental seas, they represent what His grace enables us to respond to the glorious truths. So, Let's meditate on a few things about grace. We are absolutely nothing outside the grace of Yahweh. You know what? The grace of our Father is received in and through Yeshua. And the other side of this coin is this. By His grace, we who were nothing, who we who were ordained for condemnation are now members of his family. We are now citizens of his kingdom. We are now ambassadors of his kingdom to the natural kingdoms of the world from where we are redeemed. So grace can be utilized to do what? Achieve destiny. It can also be wasted either through laziness. It can be wasted through carelessness. It can be wasted through our inability to remain connected with him, to go into arm of the flesh, and brethren, that's why there's an exhortation to everyone. Let us lay hold of the grace freely bestowed through Yeshua, and there's grace bestowed in you. There's grace imparted in you. Men and brethren, one of the things Satan does to Christians, he makes them not to examine and discover the grace given to them, and they are busy looking at the grace given to another person, not to admire it, not to appreciate it, not to embrace that which flows to them, but they look at it, they begin to get jealous, they begin to get envious, they begin to, you know, see ways to undermine or destroy what the Lord is accomplishing. Brethren and brethren, listen to this. The more you understand grace, the more you know that the word impossible was confined to the dustbin of history, the trash can of history at the cross of Calvary. And it is replaced by a new dynamic that is simply called the grace of Yahweh in Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus. Amen. This speaks of the reality that by His grace in us, all things are possible by faith. By His grace in us. All things are possible by faith. So, let me repeat it again. How do we come into the kingdom according to Ephesians chapter 2? We come into the kingdom entirely on the basis of the grace of Yahweh in Yeshua. How do we live in the kingdom? How do we live and move in the kingdom? It's entirely by His grace. Men and brethren, His grace sustains us in the face of afflictions, in the face of adversities, in the face of challenges, His grace is what sustains us. And with the abundance of His grace in our spirit man and our souls, whatever that comes from outside of Yahweh is a piece of cake. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. A thousand demons to your right, a ten thousand to your left, Satan himself coming himself if they are not of Him and by Him. 
The Bible says, associate yourself together, not by me. Whosoever shall gather against you shall fall for my sake, for your sake. And the Lord says, you will leap over every wall before you. You are going to run through every truth before you. You are going to command the mountains that appear before you to be moved from their roots and give them a relocational assignment. It's all by grace. Men and brethren, that's why I want to say to you, in all your getting, get more grace. Get more grace. I know we need wisdom. Get wisdom. Get grace. And you are made. Men and brethren, it's so important. When you combine grace with wisdom, the truth is that you are flowing in the Zoe life. Oh, that humans may know the height and the depth and the weight and the breadth of grace of our Father. His grace found me in the mirror of sin. His grace obliterated my yesterday. I don't know about you. My yesterday, His grace obliterated it. His grace clothed me in His own identity. His grace has been processing me, this vessel, processing, processing. Anything chucks it out. Once he identifies, say, yes, Lord, he chucks it out. His grace has been forming Yeshua inside this vessel, this piece of clay. His grace sustains and strengthens me. What would I be without his grace? The answer is absolutely nothing. Listen, I want you to know this. Outside of his grace, you and I, we are nothing. We cannot say enough of the grace of Yahweh. It is the ground of our faith. It is the beginning of our kingdom life. And it is the instrument of his core sustenance. As one wise preacher once quipped, look at what a wise preacher once said. Sin cannot keep you away from grace. But grace will keep you away from sin. You see, this conforms with what Paul said in the book of Romans. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. So, if you understand this dynamic, that sin cannot keep you away from grace. His grace is stretching out to you. His grace is reaching out to you. Even in that mess, even in that situation. And listen to this. When you receive his grace... It will keep you away from sin. Because the more you know his grace, the more you don't want anything. You don't want to partner with darkness. You don't want to partner with anything that is, you know, just unseeming. You don't want anything. Because when you know grace, you love righteousness, you hate iniquity. Men and brethren, anything we can do outside grace is suspect. You know what the Bible calls them? Dead works. Dead works of religion. They become smear arm of the flesh. Whatever you can do without grace is arm of the flesh. It has the same quality as filthy rag in the sight of the Father. So even if you can pray without grace, you are going to pray your own ambition. You want to force it upon Elohim. Celebrating the grace of Yahweh and Yeshua reminds us that without him we are nothing. If we take our eyes off the completeness of grace, we gravitate into religion and dead works. If we deny his grace, the root and capacity for all we're able to do, we deny him the glory and pride takes over. Grace empowers. Grace brings clarity in state of confusion. Grace releases strength of Yahweh through heater to weak vessels. Vessels that are weak. In fact, the more weak you are, the more his grace wants to fill you. The more you know your need of him, the more you can tap into his grace. Let us consider this contribution from Pastor Charlie, who died of, uh, of uh, Christ Come Church in Little Rock, Arkansas, when we first preached this, when we first taught this on Facebook. He said, it is easy, she said, it is easy to forget the grace of Elohim when we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's true. There are many times the gifts and callings that Elohim puts in us, the power of the Holy Spirit, that people begin to exercise, they forget it's all by grace. They forget that it comes about by grace. They forget that everything is by grace. And the moment you forget, you know what to happen. You begin to use the gift and calling of the Holy Spirit to build an empire for yourself. To be taught people to yourself. For instance, this thing called fatherhood. Do you know that the father wants those who are fathers, in quotes, that their core assignment is to reveal the father to their people, to your children, to those he puts in the ministry committed to your trust, the core assignment is to reveal the fatherhood of Elohim. 
And so if a pastor takes time to make people see him as father, call him daddy, papa, papa, eh? they may not see he who is the ultimate father, the one who wants you to call him Abba, father. And the father wants us to be invested in pointing people to him. And even the process, even if the process you decrease, his glory, his glory will take over. Men and brethren, it's important that we do not grieve Holy Spirit by beginning to act as if the grace is our own. Men and brethren, great destinies have been aborted because grace was frustrated and squandered. Great destinies, grace frustrated, grace squandered. There are no people who travel from one location to the other. They forget that Elohim is omnipotent. Yes, they know that. They forget he's omnipresent, he's omnipresent. You know what happens? They begin to behave in that other place different from they behave at home. You see them go to nightclubs, men and women of God. You see them go to places, you know, all kinds of stuff. And because they don't understand it's there. Great destinies can be aborted when grace is frustrated. Judas Iscariot was a man who lived with, ate with, was chosen after all night prayer by the very source, the very spring and certain friends of grace, Yeshua HaMashiach, he prayed to the Father and chose Judas Iscariot. And Judas Iscariot walked with him for three and a half years. Yet, Judas Iscariot, for 30 pieces of silver, betrayed his master. Have you not seen people? The Father connects for destiny purpose. Somehow ambition takes over. They begin to have ideas what they can do apart from each other. Before you know it, they frustrate what the father planned. One of the men called Demas, a young man. Demas was chosen to be the personal assistant of Paul the Apostle, the mentee of the great Paul the Apostle. The same Paul who mentored Timothy, who mentored Titus to greatness out of nothing. He had another young man called Demas. You know what? This Demas in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, it was said of him that he departed from Paul because he loved this world. When he got to Thessalonica, saw the great city of Thessalonica, he put his back to Paul the apostle and went his way. You know what? He frustrated grace. He squandered grace. Don't be like that. Don't squander any instrument of grace the Father has put in your life. Whether it's somebody or people the Father has put in your life for a purpose, don't ever deny yourself that privilege. It could be your pastor. It could be a young man. It could be a young lady. You are older than almost double. But yet the Father has put that person in your life for a purpose. If you know that purpose, don't begin to despise his youth. Don't despise that person who is a remnant, who understanding that all glory belongs to Elohim, points all glory to Elohim, and then because he's not swaggering, now you look at that person, he looks to you like he's nothing. And then you miss the very essence of what the Father is planning from you. No, don't squander grace. No, don't frustrate grace. Men and brethren, the hidden mystery of the new creation in Yeshua is for Yahweh to repopulate the earth rim with humans imbued with his grace to live and minister supernaturally. That's what Paul meant in Philippians 4, 13, when he says, I can do all things through Yeshua who strengthens me. When his grace is in me, I can face any situation. I can move any mountain. I can run through every troop. I can leap over every wall. When his grace is in me, I do not consider anything impossible or difficult because with Yeshua came a perfect equilibrium. Divinity came down into the earth trip to become humanity. So that through him, those who embrace him, they can receive a measure of divinity to live on a way different from the world. They flow with a power different from the world power. They flow in the grace of their heavenly father. Men and brethren, people of grace live out an irony therefore. On the one hand, they can do all things through Yeshua, residing and walking in and through them. Secondly, they undertake big kingdom business from a body perspective. 
the grace they can do all things still makes them to understand that the Father is not looking for superstars. He's not looking for solo artists. He's not looking for people who have a name. No, there's only one name, and that name is that of Yeshua Hamashiach, which is exalted in the earth realm, exalted in heaven, in the earth, and under the earth. And every one of us is now called to be co-laborers according to the spiritual kingdom tribes the Father, or networks, or groups, or fellowship the Father brings you to. Why? When grace is working you, you'll be thinking in terms of we, not me. Us, not mine. You think of the body, not your own. Men and brethren, this is a statement of fact and truth. Yeshua's grace is immeasurable. If we can imagine that grace, because it represents our, his, his transcendent self. Grace represents his transcendent self. And that's why the more you have grace, the more you yield for more grace. If there's one prayer, you can never be rebuked by the Father for praying. One of them is wisdom. If you ask him for more wisdom, he will never rebuke you. The other one is grace. You ask him for more grace, he will never rebuke you. And he will never deny you. There's grace for every situation. There's grace for every opportunity. There's grace for everything. And men and brethren, we need to be open to asking for his grace. You know, I can't have enough time to talk to you. You know, I want to say to you, let's keep it there. That grace is available. Men and brethren, you know this testimony. What you see here is grace in action. I had no chance whatsoever. The Elohim had waited for me since I was a young boy. I, as far as I can remember, about 1967, the grace of the Father was coming. I was about 11. And that grace, you know, uh, even at the stage, I began to study, read on my own Bible books, all that. I was even given invitation to come to church. I answered the altar call. It didn't happen. But you know what? One day, one day, when all the altar calls didn't work, one day his grace finally arrested, broke through this vessel, showed me the filthiness of my being, taught what I did. April 1, 1988, that's the day I come. Not all the days I was going to church. That is the day he apprehended this vessel in genuine conversion. And grace began to change. People didn't give me a chance. I'll give you the testimony. I wasn't given a chance I would make it because I was in show business. It was about women, wine, vanity, all those things. New names in the newspaper every weekend. How many papers carry the shows and all that I've been doing, all that kind of stuff. But grace did it. By his grace, sin. By his grace, every other thing. Every other thing that Father has done is grace. Spiritual things. The grace of his Holy Spirit. The grace of understanding his word. The grace of, you know, receiving a walk with him. The capacity to walk with him. The grace to hear him clearly and distinctly. Clearly and distinctly. The grace to receive the assignment to supervise some things he wanted to do among his remnant. The grace to lead different networks with specific assignments in the kingdom, all by his grace. So if anybody talks to you about grace, I think I have a little bit of qualification of grace to talk to you about grace because I've seen grace work. I've seen grace work in everything. I've seen grace work in my wife, grace, the gift of grace. All the things I did to get a wife for myself, was uh, in the fullness of time, he brought grace into my life. The father said, you know, this woman will not be able to give birth to her children. Because of the soldier when he was a child, she was a child. I say, I didn't come to marry children. I came to do the will of the father, which happens to be your daughter. I say, okay. Two years later, favor. Two years later, elect. Two years later, arise. Two years later, praise. Three years later, destiny. Five. Men and brethren, don't, don't, don't get me started. Every single thing is grace. You've seen it. Everything we do. IMF. Grace. Global School of Peace. Grace. Masterclass. Grace. Frontline Intercessors. Grace. Global Missions Board. Grace. All the Father is doing across the world, six continents. All the Father is doing in countries, some, you know, you know, 140 countries by now, or even more than that, grace. Grace to deal with all manner of people. Brethren, craft 
brethren who come as locusts to eat up, who come as caterpillars to destroy, grace to bear with them, grace to intercede for them, grace to love them, and grace to know when, rather than they are destroying the fellowship, to say, brother, sister, you know what? If you can walk, why not let's part in peace? Grace, men and brethren. I thank the Father. Can I ask you, what do you understand by grace as an assignment? What do you understand by it? Give me one or two things you pick from today's lesson. Let's go to lesson two for today. Lesson two for today is overview of the cause grace. Overview. In order to cover all the grounds Yahweh intends, let us get a grip through a synopsis. And the synopsis is the summary. This vital life impacting cause will examine in detail this experiential, practical lifestyle issue. Grace. Participants will be enabled to have a deep understanding of the primacy of grace as the first fruit of the redemption in Yeshua. These questions will be covered. What really is grace? Then on what basis does grace operate? Then what are the implications of living by grace? And what, can, what benefits can the believer expect from living a life of grace? Then things like, what is the grace known as God? What is it all about? We're going to be covering a number of things, a number of subjects. The edition we have right now is 149 pages, so it is likely to grow up to 200 pages. I'm not saying it must be, but it may likely grow into. So, let's define grace. What is grace? Defining the grace of Yahweh is akin to measuring Him. It is truly impossible. However, Yahweh has chosen to reveal aspects of His transcendent self, even He who is omniscient, omnipresent and omnipotent, he allows his grace to be revealed in various measures to different members of his family. So please, whatever I share with you is not fixed. It's not fixed in concrete. Those only apostles, no, 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 it's not exhaustive. It's just based on what he has revealed. It's a measure of the understanding he has chosen to give to this vessel. And so what it means is this, we know in part and we teach in part. So I'll be only telling you what his grace has enabled me to know about grace and to tell you. And so this is a caveat, a definition. If it does not measure with your expectation, all the authorities you know, don't take a stone to stone us. Please just know that what has been revealed to them, they have released it, and that is good. So this one that is revealed to this one, you can also take it and add to what you already know, and you lose nothing. So what is grace from what? We have seen all these years in our walk with him. Grace is the measure of the person, the presence, and ability of Yahweh freely made available to members of his family in the person and influence of Yeshua, Jesus, for the purpose of coming into his kingdom, living in the kingdom, serving and in the kingdom and demonstrating him on this side of eternity by the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. So that definition has the role of the Father, the role of Yeshua, the Son, and the role of the Holy Spirit. Let me take it again. The measure of the person, presence, and ability of Yahweh our Father, freely made available to members of his family in the person and influence of Yeshua, for the purpose of coming into the kingdom, living in the kingdom, serving in the kingdom, and demonstrating him on this side of eternity by the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. So, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that grace is dispensed. Grace is not just received and stored to get dry or moldy. Grace is designed to be received and released. Grace is designed to be received and released. If you receive grace and do not release it, it is actually, from the spiritual point of view, wickedness. That's why Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. When you receive the spiritual gift, release it. You receive to release. It's not your own. 
You can't boast about it. You can't put it down. You know, grace is like a river flowing. And the Father wants it to flow through you. Through a tributary called you. Put your name there. He said, don't dam it. Don't take a dam and build across it. And the water goes back. And then after some time, it gets brackish, full of algae and mosquito and all kinds of things. Fill it up. No. Grace is like a river of living water flowing. Dispensing life. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not just Holy Spirit as in his person, but also as in his presence, as in his power, as in his glory. That's why the Lord wants us to be in going mode. Grace gives us the ability to be in going mode because we are ever ready to be used by Holy Spirit to touch lives assigned to us. The grace he puts in you is for somebody, is for some people. Don't, be, don't go into premature satisfaction when you have not discovered the full scope of the people and the places where the Father wants to use the grace in you to impact. Grace can make a difference. Grace does make a difference. Grace can change lives. And that is why the Father wants us to understand that from a practical point of view, therefore, grace is not such an it as it is a him, Yeshua. What this means is this. Grace is the same as the person of Yeshua, Jesus. He is the fullness of grace, of Yahweh, expressed in bold relief in, for all realms of life in heaven, on earth and hell. For them to behold and receiving Yeshua is akin to receiving the grace of Yahweh. In the book of John 1, 16 to 17, and of his fullness have we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yeshua. Titus 2, 11, For the grace of Elohim that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Men and brethren, living that Yeshua life, attached as it were to he who is the true vine, is the only basis on which the grace or life of our Heavenly Father flows through the heavens, the indwelling Holy Spirit, through the spirit and soul of the saint, to demonstrate to the outside the reality of the quantum of space where Yeshua has ruled. Let me tell you this. You see this flower here? This flower here, Let's call it Christantatum or whatever. I mean, pardon me, I'm just saying. Let's call it Christantatum. You will not know Christantatum except through the flower. In other words, if this plant is Christantatum, let's take that we are here, the flower. Holy Spirit that runs through Yeshua released through Yeshua into us when it manifests to the outside world. So people see us. They see Yeshua. They encounter us. They encounter Yeshua. And we take all the glory to him. We refuse to take it. That's why the more the Lord uses you, the more you don't want to ask people to call you daddy, papa, father. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. No. We parent people. But Yeshua said, call no man father on earth. Matthew 23. You come to that place of understanding what it means. In other words, he wants you to point people to the fatherhood of Elohim because you give all the glory to Elohim for everything he does in your life and through you. You don't take his glory for any reason. Men and brethren, the Father wants us to know. That's why the book of John 15 is so powerful. He says, I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it might bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. This word cleans us. When grace is upon his word, cleans us. He says, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except you abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If we abide in him, if this thing is not abiding, this thing it goes bad immediately. Two days is done. But if abides in that tree, Yeshua is the tree, we are simply the branches that bring forth 
who he is in the atrium cannot be known. People who encounter us encounter him. Have you said that? Let us also acknowledge the potency of one of the most quoted definitions of grace that was released through one of the faith wardens of old, whose names we can't even remember now. He said, grace, they call it God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. This definition advances in direct manner the thesis that everything owned by Yahweh was downloaded in Yeshua when he hung on the tree on behalf of fallen humanity. As he willingly paid the supreme price, Yeshua alone became the reference point through which and by whom Yahweh deals with all humanity. You know, Paul told the people at Athens in that day, Elohim would judge all men by Yeshua whom he sent. You know, all that is Yahweh is in effect freely available only in and through just one source and intermediary, Yeshua Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he had made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Elohim in him. And so having said that, there's a verb perspective of grace. You see, grace as in a person, Yeshua, and his presence, his power, his glory, that is made available in us, through us. There's also a verb perspective. Now, this angle looks at grace as a verb which describes actions. From this perspective, the best definition comes from a vessel who has experienced grace. You know, it's a long time I've not mentioned Bishop Robert Smith, senior of Total Outreach for Christ Ministries. Again, in Little Rock, when we went to do some work there, you know, he had a very deep little, little book, Seven Aspects of Grace. And there he defines grace as, grace is the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the, in the life, including gratitude acceptance, benefit, and honor. Men and brethren, there's something else I would like to say to you before we close today. It is the fallacy some people have that grace is only in the New Testament. There's no grace in the Old. And this is based on the what we are told in the book of John 1.17, you know, that grace and truth came by Yeshua. Now, men and brethren, we need to understand something. The law was given by Moses at Sinai. But how was Moses chosen? Grace. He would have been killed with other children. How is it that a mother had it leading to put her uh, to put the baby out in a reed on the river Nile? How is it that the daughter of Pharaoh came to discover him? How is it that the daughter of Pharaoh put, took him in? How is it that he became raised in Pharaoh's house? And at the appointed time he went on his assignment, Grace. It was by grace Moses was chosen. Even when Moses died and Satan went to take his body, Michael the archangel was sent by Elohim to rebuke Satan. He rebuked Satan in the name of Elohim and took the body. Why? Because the grace of Elohim covered Moses. That's why the Lord said to Moses, you know what? So that you don't miss it entirely. You've begun to make mistakes. I know you have repented. But you know what? To make sure you don't miss it, hand over to Joshua. Go up to the mountain. Look at the promised land, and I'm going to call you home. Grace covered him. Men and brethren, Yeshua has been there from the beginning. To say grace only in the New Testament means Yeshua only came to pass in the New Testament. Have you forgotten that Yeshua is the pre-existent one, part of Elohim, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Grace is in him. Grace in him appeared to Abraham. When Abraham was coming back in John, I mean in the book of Genesis chapter 14, as Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a manifestation of the pre-existent Yeshua who was appearing to Abraham, his friend. And that encounter was the basis and is the basis of the Melchizedek priesthood. Men and brethren, all through the Bible we see that grace has existed. It's grace that preserved that David, that he was called a friend of Yeshua, uh, Elohim in spite of the mistakes he made, because the grace of Elohim enabled him to repent. Grace is what elected Esther. Grace is what elected Joshua. Grace enabled Mordecai to do the work. Grace has been with us all through life, all through human experience on earth. Everything, how was Adam and Eve created? By grace. When they received they will have been destroyed. 
blotted out. But you know what the first thing Elohim did was to slay an animal, take the skin, and cover their nakedness. Grace. And even they told them, go out of the garden. Grace still preserved them. How was Noah chosen? Grace. Grace has always been. It's just that it is in the person of Yeshua Hamashiach that grace came bodily in full measure. Grace manifested. Men and brethren, the more you understand grace, the more you will never boast about a gift, about a calling. The more you understand grace, the more you cannot but be humble. I'm not talking about false humility. I mean the true, genuine one where you give him all the glory. And listen, I know there are some people, especially one young man, one man from Asia who teaches what people call a hyper grace. You know what? People are giving him a great credit to even call it hyper grace. Listen, grace can never be hyper. What it is is not hyper. It is false grace. Any grace that makes people careless enough to give sin room to take root in their life, that they can be comfortable in sin and it doesn't touch them and they sin as a lifestyle. They don't love righteousness. They don't hate iniquity, but they use grace as an excuse to remain in sin. Anything you see, anywhere you see that, you know that that's not real grace. It's not true grace. It's another grace. Just as there's another Yeshua, the one created in Europe, the one that's an European, the original Yeshua came in a Jewish body. The original Yeshua <laughs> is manifestation of Elohim. You don't mess up with him. There's true Holy Spirit, there's fake one. So also, there's true grace, there's fake grace. True grace leads us to repentance. Through grace keeps us away from sin. Through grace makes us to grow in grace. He makes us yearn for more grace because he gives more grace. And Elohim resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. I'd like to ask you, what aspect? Please define and explain grace. Define and explain grace. And share three things you receive from this particular lesson. Brothers and sisters, get ready for a ride. Get ready. For the Father is taking us to somewhere where we understand how he wants us to live in the atrium. Everything. Everything we can ever be. Everything we can ever do. There's grace for every state in life. There's grace for every assignment. There's grace for every gift and calling. And when you walk in it, and when you don't mix it up with a thousand and one things, when you are single focused, single minded in pursuit of the release of grace, the grace you receive will be released. And he'll give you more grace. The Bible says he gives more grace. If I were you, I will tap into the mystery of grace. And one of the ways you can tap into the mystery of grace is to receive faith to receive. How do you receive faith? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of Elohim. Brothers and sisters, we love you dearly. Listen, what we are doing is called kingdom culture. And it is about helping people to get to understand who they are in Yeshua, who is in them, and the quantum of what the Father has made available for them with which to fulfill destiny. We cannot force you. We cannot impose it on you. We take the approach of the sower. The sower goes out to sow. You sow. As you sow, some will fall on wayside. Some will fall on rocky ground. Some will fall among thorns. Some will fall on good soil. 25% good soil. May you be among the remnant that this war the Father is bringing, the soil of your heart will be good. The soil of your heart will have been plowed by Holy Spirit. The word he will sow in you will bear root. And for some, 30 fold, for others, 60 fold, for others, 100 fold, and even for some, others, 1,000 fold. May this world explode grace in you. May you come to a place where you can walk in the confident knowledge that grace is all. And once you are in his grace, you cannot be touched. You cannot be moved by any man. You will fulfill your destiny and you do it in sincerity and in truth. 
You will not do it trying to pull down anybody. You will not do it trying to supplant anybody because there is room for everyone. The kingdom, I mean, the sky is too wide that two birds do not collide. The kingdom is so vast, so extraordinary, and the Father knows every single person he created, every single person he redeemed, and he has given you space Call your domain where you can exercise kingdom dominion and authority in the name of Yeshua. That space he has given to you, he has not given it to any other person. Anybody trying to get crashed there will crash out. That space he has given to you is bespoke. Just as your life is bespoke, with grace, you will fulfill it. May you be among those who fulfill grace. May you be among those for whom grace will not be wasted. May you be among those who the Father can depend upon. Maybe among those who will run the race till the end, you will not squander grace, you will not fall by the wayside, you will not frustrate grace. Men and brethren, this week and next week, and if it pleases the Lord, up our week, we'll do this course, we'll finish it, we go into the next one, and that will be it. By the time it is the IMF USA National Conference. We love you dearly. We wish the best for you. And I'm going to pray now, then I make an announcement. Father, I pray that the word that has been released by your grace shall inspire everyone to look away from arm of the flesh, what they know, what they can do, to look away from pride of life and to desire for more of your grace, to embrace your grace in its fullness. And as they receive your grace, they will also be vested in releasing your grace to all those you have appointed them to without waiting to be recognized, without waiting to be appreciated, without waiting, not minding what people shall do. They will, they will be released of grace. Father, help us not to be among those who frustrate your grace or who squander your grace. Have your way, O oh Lord. Thank you for answering our prayer. To you be all honor and glory in Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. A few bad days today. One of them is evangelist Jennifer Lapompe of Shai Foundation. Uh, one of these uh, graduates of the Global School of Ministry in London. And she's doing a beautiful work in the nation of Haiti. Responding to the crisis in the land. And the Father has been using her mind chili. And then our sister, uh, Apostle Barbara A. Williams. I uh, think of Michigan. And our brother Walter Horner. Who was the first uh, a, a coordinator of IMF in Senegal before he relocated to the United States of America, and our sister Vinnie Johnson. You know, may the Lord bless all of them. Thank you so much, Arise, for being on the camera today. The Father bless you.